you know, for those who kind of keep up with me on, on YouTube, I did sort of like make a post about this saying, hey, told you this deck was good. Um, and this deck actually won, it got first place in two back-to-back -back tournaments. One was like a team tournament. So I guess I don't necessarily know how many matches that he won in that. It could have just been that his team carried. Uh, but given that like it got first place in a, another, you know, normal tournament as well, clearly a good deck. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to be swapping back and forth between like the original lists that I came up with and his list. And I'm going to sort of talk about um, the, the differences with each and, and sort of my thoughts. Because... I mean, he kind of kept the core the same, but he changed a lot too. Um, in his video that, or you know, that was on Jinzo and Tonic's channel, um, he said that he made the deck more aggressive, which I I agree. He did he did make the deck more aggressive, um, with both like kind of the monster lineup, but also like the trap lineup leans a little more aggressive too. Like, instead of having cards like Sakuretu Armor to, like, protect your guys, you're instead playing cards like Solemn Judgment and Dust Tornado to sort of go on the offensive. So, so yeah, it definitely is a more aggressive list. Um, I don't think that's necessarily, like, a good or a bad thing in and of itself. Uh, so, so let's talk about the monsters first, because some of the stuff that he did, I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Some I'm like, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. And others I'm kind of like, well, I'm not sure. So, one interesting thing that he did compared to my list is he main decks two Blade Knights, whereas I main deck two Magician of Faiths, and I think that's not that's not a bad idea, uh, to be honest. Like, I think when I was building this deck originally, I like tunnel visioned a little and just kind of like threw in two Magician of Faiths because like, oh, every deck has two Magician of Faiths, like that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I definitely don't think Magician of Faith is like super needed. Um, I will say, like, if I had to change this deck, I would cut at least one Faith. Like, I would probably just play one Faith. Obviously, my original list has two. His list has zero. I'll explain why I think one is, like, probably best. And there's a couple of reasons. It's a Shining Angel target, and it's a Sangin target. So, like, if you look at the, his deck list, there's not, like, a ton of stuff that you can really get with Sangin, right? Like, it's okay, I can get a Dekochi, I can get a Spy, I can get, like, an Angel, and, like, that's kind of about it. Like, yes, you can get, like, Roulette Barrel, um, which she's playing and DD War Lady, but you don't really want to search either of those, because then your Angels won't have targets later. So, like, really in this deck, like, Sangin only has, like, three targets. Whereas in, in my deck, Sangin's a little better. And obviously, like, that's not, like, huge, but it does, it does matter. Um, so yeah, there will be some times that you want to search it with Angel, and there will be some times that you want to search it with Sagan. Otherwise, I don't think you're, like, super thrilled about Magician of Faith. So to me, I think it would make a good one of. Um, I think, like, neither myself nor, um, you know, Dingo here considered one Faith, because, like, no one plays one Faith. So it's, it's like, one of those things where, you know, I've talked about this in other videos where... When nothing, when something is never done before, you like don't even think about it. Whereas if maybe you slow down and think about it, you go, "Oh, this this might work for in my particular situation." So personally, I like the fact that he realized that like this isn't a deck that really needs an addition of faith. But I, I still think he should probably play one. Um, Blade Knight, I like though. Um, it, I mean, there, there's different ways to build this deck. It's funny because I. You know, I was thinking about, like, how, like, what's the best way to go about, like, playing a, a return deck, and Blade Knight is, like, definitely good in a return deck, right? Because when you activate your return, normally you're gonna have, like, one or less cards in hand. So it's basically, you know, it's basically, like, you know, 2,000 that you get back off your turn, right? So that's pretty good. And it's funny, like, if hypothetically you could play, like, an unlimited number of Blade Knights in GOAT format, I would probably just play, like, you know, some really large number of Blade Knights. Like, I just play seven Blade Knights and just make that, like, my only light in this deck. Because, you know, it's a good aggressive card. It's good with Return. It's good with Chaos. Like, even though, like, we both decided to play Angel because it's, like, better than Thunder Dragon, 
Like, if we could just, like, cut all the angels and roulette barrels for more Blade Knights, like, I think that would just be a good idea, right? Um, you know, the problem, obviously, is you can't play, like, seven or eight Blade Knights or whatever, so you gotta think about, like, what, what other lights you play. Um, and, you know, I did mention, like, oh, I, I wish I could play a Zero Priest, but you can't get it off return since it can't be special summoned. He decided to play it anyway, which, I mean, it is fine. Um, yeah, it is, it is a little crazy. I mean, it's, it's not that crazy. Um, so, so yeah, it's like, you know, you want to play Blade Knight, you want to play Azura. Like, I think with, with, if we go back to my original list, like, if you just cut, like, a Faith here for a Blade Knight, you know, I think it'd be totally fine. He cut two Faiths for two Blade Knights, which I think is also fine. Um, most of the other monsters are pretty similar. It's, it's interesting that he decided to keep Roulette Barrel since he said, oh, I'm going in a more aggressive direction, but I think that's fine too. The main thing that he cut from my list that I really don't agree with is Zaborg. Now, obviously, like, it can, you know, no one wants to play a deck with, like, three Chaos Monsters and two Tributes. Um, but here I just think there's no excuse because Zaborg is just, like, so, so good in this meta right now. Now, again, this is this is a case where you could say, oh, well, maybe we should just play one. Maybe we don't need two. But I would definitely play at least one, probably two. Like, when I was streaming myself playing this deck, Zaborg was just, like, far and away, like, the card that impressed me the most. And we see some other decks um, that have been either maining or siding Zaborg a bit more lately. Um, like, in this same team tournament, one of his teammates was, like, main decking a Zaborg in his good control deck. So I don't know, like, how much, like, you know, discussion they had as a team regarding, like, their deck list, but I find it weird that, like, his teammate played Goat Control and decided to main Zaborg, but then he decided to cut it. That, that, um, yeah, that doesn't feel right to me. I mean, Zaborg is just good with, like, a lot of cards. Like, it's, you know, you want to... What's interesting is, like, you know, my deck, I have two Zaborgs and one Tsukiyomi. He has zero Zaborgs and zero Tsukiyomis. So, like, in my deck, if you, like, get one of your flips, whether it's Dakochi or Spy or whatever, you can capitalize off that very easily because you can either tribute Verzal Borg or summon Tsukiyomi and flip it down. Whereas in his deck, he doesn't have either of those. Um, so, I mean, it's not really, like, a... supposed to be, like, a flip effect-based deck, but you kind of have to play three Dakochi, three Spy at a minimum because that's, like, sort of the whole point of the deck. They, like... You know, you cross out the guys, then you return them or whatever. Uh, but sometimes you actually do draw your Dakochi, you do draw your Spy. And in that scenario, you know, I like to be able to capitalize. Um, so for the most part, you know, I think the monsters are fine. I would like to find a way to, like, fit in as a Borg, um, fit in a Magician of Faith. To be honest, like, in this meta, like, in, in the current meta, and in the meta that was present in the tournament they entered, I really don't think we need this main deck as Zero Priest, right? Now, he had one-sided, so it's like, I mean, yeah, there might be some matchups where you want, like, a couple of Azura Priests, but in most of the matches, I just think you don't want any, right? Like, against most of the Thunder Dragon Chaos decks, you, you don't want Azura. I mean, Azura, okay, it's good against Mimic Chaos, it's good against Goat Control, it's it's pretty decent against Reasoning Gate, but like you don't really want it against Warriors. Um, you don't want it uh, against against sort of the you know the more standard Thunder Dragon decks, which those are like the two most popular decks. So to me, it's like if you don't want Azura against the two most popular decks, you probably shouldn't be maining it. Um, and like again, it doesn't work with Return, so. To me, it's like, I would cut this Azura for, for something. Um, Tsukiyomi, I don't think you have to play. Frio is kind of playing it for a couple of reasons. Again, one, it's good with all the flip effects. Two, Tsukiyomi is just a really good card in the meta right now. And if you're not maining it, I think you should probably be siding it. Um, I think, like, the philosophy on Tsukiyomi has evolved, like, a lot in Goat Format's history. Like, it used to be, like, oh yeah, like, every deck has to play, like, one or two Tsukiyomis. Um, then you had these Chaos decks that were playing zero, and people were like, oh yeah, Tsukiyomi sucks now. And then I think now, like, we're kind of going back to the middle where it's like, it depends. Um, it's, 
you know, it, it, it kills Kaiku, which is nice. Um, you know, obviously it's good with like your flips, which is nice. Kills Thousand Eyes, which is nice. It, it kind of has a it has a very specific role in the meta. It's it's kind of like Azura in that it's good against some decks, but not others. So, like, I can see why he didn't play Tsukiyomi, but by the same logic, I kind of wouldn't play Azura either. Um, difference, though, is that, like, Tsukiyomi is pretty good against, like, all the warrior decks, whereas Azura Priest, like, not so much. So, to me, that makes Tsukiyomi, like, more justifiable in the main deck. That's, that's, that's my opinion. Um, another change... You don't want to notice, I, I was citing, like, the scapegoat meta package, uh, mostly for, like, the aggro decks, also for Reasoning Gate. He was not. Um, and, and I agree with that only because he wasn't playing Magician of Faith. So, like, if you're not playing Magician of Faith, like, you don't have any level 1's main deck. It's just too much of a hassle to go that route. Um, you know, obviously, like, you know, you can, you can do things post-board where... Just like in a normal Angel Chaos deck where the Shining Angel gets the Faith and that's your meta target. That's kind of what I was going for post-side. But again, since he's not playing the Faith, no reason to do that. It saves you a bunch of uh, space in the side deck. Um, he's also not maining Snatch Steel, which... I mean, I disagree with, and I don't really know what the logic is behind that. Now, admittedly, in his list, Snatch Steel is not as good as it is in my list. Because again, I have the two Zaborgs in the Tsukiyomi, he doesn't. So I get that, like, okay, Snatch isn't, like, nearly as good in your deck as it is in mine, but, like, okay, instead of it being a 9 out of 10, it's an 8 out of 10, right? I would I would still play it. Um, There's just so many decks. I mean, in general, there's very few decks where you don't want Snatch Steel, right? Okay, I get, like, you don't want Snatch Steel against, like, Empty Jar or... I don't know, like, burn or something. But against, like, 90% of the meta, you want Snatch Deal. I feel like you're just going to be siding this in so, so often. Um, so, so I would, I personally would mean that. Hey, Unknown Gamer. Um, so, so yeah, other than that, like, I think, you know, spells mostly the same as mine. I was playing Lightning Vortex as well. Uh, Dueling Sims coming along well. It's going to be at the end of the stream. We just got started here. Um, Vortex, you know, from my experience playing the deck, I could kind of take it or leave it. I I thought it was fine. It wasn't the MVP, but it wasn't like a card that I felt like, oh, I've got to cut this either. So, I mean, it, again, it kind of depends on the meta a little. I Cutting Vortex, I think, is fine. I, I don't have too much to say about that. You know, I don't really, I don't have any strong thoughts there. Um... His trap lineup is, like, a lot different than mine, other than, like, well, he's playing two returns, obviously. That's kind of the whole point of the deck. But, yeah, so one thing that's interesting is that he's maining Dust Tornado and not maining MST, which you almost never see that, but I think this is, like, the one deck where you can justify it because he has so many things that you can set with Dust Tornado's second effect. Now, like, obviously in my list, it's okay, you can dust and then set just return, right? But in his list, you can set return or solemn judgment, which are both pretty good. So with, like, five dust tornado targets, so to speak, um, I actually agree with that over over the MST. It, it's a very, like, small thing. Like, if you cut one dust for MST, like, 99% of the time, you're not really going to notice any difference. But I, I actually, I do agree with that. And I think it was smart for him to think about that. Um, so yeah. So he's playing three Psalms. I'm playing none. I get the logic behind it. I'm not necessarily sure if it's good logic, which is that, you know, oh, I'm going to be paying half a lot anyway for a turn. So it's like, might as well pay half for Solemn too. Um, I don't know. I mean... This approach is definitely a little different than mine. I, I, to be honest, I feel like my deck is, or my list is going to be, like, slightly better against aggro than his. Because, like, against a warrior deck, you'd much rather have, like, Sakura 2 armor than Solemn Judgment. Like, you want to protect your guys from, like, Mystic Swordsman level 2. Whereas, like, you never want to, like, have to Solemn a Mystic Swordsman level 2 on, like, turn 1. That's just, like, really gross. So, if you expect to be playing against, like, 
um, other sort of like chaos control type decks all day, okay, I can I can get on board with Solemn. But if you expect to be playing against aggro, you know, not not sure if this main deck is the way to go. Does shoot another card that's like very good against chaos control, not good against aggro. Um, and it's like in my deck, yeah, like Zaborg is like kind of bad against aggro. But like other than that, like every card in the deck is good against aggro. Like we're even playing like Vortex and Snatch Steel. He's playing neither. So I'm not sure if he was just expecting like, oh, I just don't think that like, you know, anyone good is going to play aggro. Maybe. I, I don't know. Because it seemed like a lot of the anti-aggro stuff was in like the side rather than the main. I will say something that I've observed lately. This is just like experience playing different decks. When I do decide to main dust shoot. I often find that two works the best. And I don't know if that's just like anecdote or superstition or whatever, but like it's one of those cards where it's like you want to open it, but like you don't really want to open multiples, like especially when you're going second. So for that reason, I like kind of like two. It's it's the logic of, oh, you want to see it sometimes, but not all the time, which is kind of a meme. But like in this case, I, I think it's also, I think it's also valid. Um, I don't know if this would be the kind of deck that I would main dust shoot in, but if I did main dust shoot, I agree with with the number. Um, I guess dust shoot. I mean, it can kind of be good, like with your aggressive guys. Like you dust shoot, send back their non flip, and then like summon blade knight, um, that sort of thing. Or if you dust shoot and see that they have scapegoat, you just like keep poking with a zero priest or something. But I don't think dust shoot is like especially insane in this list. Um, as far as his side goes, for the most part, it's, like, it's pretty standard. There's, like, nothing that really, like, jumps out at me as being really bad. Uh, MST and Snatch, like, obviously, if you're not maining those, you're gonna side those. Same thing with the Sakura 2 armors. If you're not maining them, you're gonna be siding them. You know, I would probably, like, personally, I would rather just have, like, the Sakus in the main and, like, the Dust Shoots in the side or, you know, maybe not main, like, three solemns i don't know i actually i think the side deck is is fine given like what the main deck ended up being mine is is a little like a little untuned the one thing i will say is i i do think he should be siding the Jalgen. um in any deck where you're maining like three shining angels i think you just want to be siding the Jalgen too i don't know if maybe he like just forgot to add it because even sometimes i do that sometimes i forget about Jalgen and forget to put it in my side um so yeah, I, I would side Jalgen. Like, not only is it really good against Reasoning Gate, but it's also pretty good against Chaos Recruiter. Not that, like, a lot of people play Chaos Recruiter, but when you do happen to play against it, you know, if they're, like, Tomato Rams into your Angel, you know, your Angel resolves first, you get Jalgen, and then their guy doesn't resolve. So there's, like, kind of cool things you can do with that. Um, I get that, like, Jalgen isn't very good with, like, Return, for example. Um... <laughs> But it is very good with Angel, so for that reason I would play it. Um Yeah, other than that, like it's it's mostly pretty standard, right? Like there's nothing There's nothing that really jumps out at me as being bad. I think he, he covered most of his bases like pretty well. Um Yeah, I don't know. I feel like overall I think the main thing that I don't like about his list in comparison to mine is I feel like it's going to be a little softer um, to aggro than mine is. But otherwise, it's fine. I mean, you know, so some of his changes were good. Some of them, um, you know, I wasn't on board with. So, yeah, so, so that's my thoughts. You know, I still think this deck is pretty good. Um, Chaos Return, that is. And, and I think, like, pretty quickly the GOAT meta has been evolving. Um, it's interesting because in my 2021 video, I made three predictions, which is that, um, you know, warriors aren't going away. Mimic chaos will be like the safe choice for a control player and return will be really good. And like all three of those predictions, I think have like proven to be true so far. Um, the interesting thing about making predictions, like, especially for someone like me is when I say something, people you know, they, they care to some extent. So to an extent, like when you're seen as an authority in like some sort of field, predictions can kind of be self-fulfilling prophecies. It's kind of like the stock market where like 
if Motley Fool says, like, oh, this is a good stock to buy, like, it'll literally, like, go up, like, 10% right after the article comes out. And it's, like, at that point, like, does your prediction really count for anything, right? Like, if your prediction's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, I'm not necessarily saying that, like, my predictions were, like, objectively amazing. Uh, But I do think, like, you know, Chaos Return is a good deck, and I wouldn't say it if I didn't think it was a good deck. But it's interesting, because he said he got the idea from me, so it's like, if I never said it was a good deck, would it have won, right? It's just just one of those one of those things to think about. Um So yeah, so 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 that's my thoughts. And like already the meta's changing a little. Like Warrior decks are still playing like two or three Kaiku, but you don't see like the Chaos decks main decking Kaiku as much anymore. So it's possible that like as the months go on, like this type of deck like won't be as good. Um and like this kind of deck, it's not it's not like super powerful in a vacuum. It's mainly a meta call. So like if the meta isn't like right, then I don't think this deck will do very well. But like the other chaos players like have to they're gonna have to respect it to some extent, right? Either they'll have to like side something for it or build their main differently or whatever, because like the average Thunder Dragon Chaos deck is just really soft to this. Like it was, it was at the point where like they were just begging for someone to show up with this deck. Like when you're playing three Dakochis, three spies, and like maining two Kaiku, like you're just asking people to show up main decking multiple return. And obviously that's that's exactly what happened here.